Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Nilaus, and this is the series of guides and tutorials here on YouTube that guides you through all aspects of the game, uh, be it simple or advanced. And I've covered a lot of topics and I've kind of also almost run out of topics, but with the uh, advent or the, uh, the the growth of my Mega Base in the Book train system, there has been an abundance of questions and uh, sort of supposed proposed fix, fixes to how I can, why don't you just do this to fix your train network? And I thought uh, I've been trying to answer it in YouTube comments, but that's just not the right place to do that. So here is a tutorial and a guide on the most advanced parts of the train network dealing with deadlocks, train limits and depots and why they work, how they work, don't work and what you need to be careful of. So I hope this will be useful to you. If it is, you know where the like button is. And uh, of course, if you haven't followed the rest of the base, let me just have a look and show you this. Uh, this is the base as it currently stands. It is massive. It's running at 2700 science per minute. Quite stable, eh, more or less. And of course, it will grow as the the, the let's play continues so do check that out if you you haven't already now the first thing is that i need to build a little simulation here i'm working now in uh, in editor mode so it's much easier to show things and also so that yeah, i don't get run over as i run around but also i can edit at a much further distance so what i need to do is build a little simulation here of my train system this is how my train system currently works i have loading stations and i have unloading stations and i have the same number of trains running between the loading stations and unloading stations so if in this case i have five loading stations five unloading stations and i have five trains operating that's pretty much the basic of my situation what i have here is that i have fixed each of these as a one that means that uh, you can see the green light when the green light is on then the train station is on and I want to show you some of the examples of this train network because this is the one I use and uh, where it is, works and where it does not work. Now, of course, and this is not part of the, this design, this is part of the tutorial called the Many to Many Train Network. I have a lot of circuits here that uh, governs when they open or not. But for the sake of, of this experiment and this tutorial, I will be, I'll be opening and closing them myself. So the first thing you want to see is, well, if everything is open, both all loading stations and all unloading stations, the trains are happily flowing back and forth, as you would expect. As I start closing some of these stations, these are now the loading stations. This represents that I don't have enough materials being produced, so the, the train system is actually starved for resources. As you can see here, what happens is that the trains will start gathering at the unloading stations and they will have this destination full because they will not have anywhere to go. And as this one uh, fills up, another train comes in. So you can see that as long as there is place for a train to go in, they this train system is robust and they will just be stuck here at uh, waiting for a train station to unload. So good news all around. Now in this similar case, if we do it the other way around and close, uh, actually that's not what I wanted. There, let's do that one. So now there's only one unloading station. That means this simulates the fact that I have lots and lots of resources. All of my loading stations or smelting stations, they are full and brimming with resources. But the, the consumption is only going slowly and it will then only go here. So again, again, you can see that these trains will get in an idle position waiting for a loading station. This represents these trains would be full trains and they are just waiting for any station to request a train. This is the happy situation where we want to be. And you can see here, it works flawlessly perfect and awesome. Of course, the one thing to note about this, and it's something that I'm also seeing, they will always take the ones that are closest. So this one will never ever get taken as long as the first ones can keep up. That's just a feature. And that's why sometimes it's good to spread things out over the network so that it's not always the same, uh, same place that get drained. Now here is the problem that we have seen if you've been following along. And that is the case where we have pretty much, we have not enough not enough production and what we see is that uh, in this case we have uh, just a bit of yes thank you auto save we're basically struggling to keep up and we don't have enough places to for all this to go and uh, we're basically just at this limit where every single time there's a there's a train being loaded it's going to be sent out and what you see now is this is the deadlock we've been seeing for steel there are enough trucks uh, trains in the network there is enough production because it's right here. We have a full train that's uh, they're waiting to go out and we have an empty train that's waiting to go back. This is what uh, I have been mentioning as what I consider a bug. 
it's it's probably it's not a bug in the technical sense. I know that no developer would accept that this is a bug, but it's an unintended, un um, uh, impractical feature. In my opinion, this train should not count towards the train limit because it is already leaving. If it didn't, then it wouldn't. This deadlock would not work. Oh, this did not would not be the case and this one would go into this location because this train has sort of already left the station it just can't get out of the station it's not but right now this full train is reserving a spot at the station even though it's not actually on the station um how do we know it's not on the station because if i do uh if i do here if i look at that one and try to see that i said uh read stopped train as an item t there is no there's no output it is simply not reading the stop train so that doesn't count as a stop train but it counts towards a reservation anyway that is uh, this is the problem we've seen for steel how do we solve it well the way i uh, i want to solve it and this is the why i have not done anything the way i want to solve it is just doing like this just open more stations now basically that means i need to make sure that i have enough resources to go in even to the point where i just have uh, a bit more this is a uh, this is the part but it's really important that you don't get stuck in the in these situations here uh, and and that's really what we are what we are trying to avoid is having it getting stuck so what uh, what i've seen in a lot of comments is hey why don't you just add a depot or a waiting waiting station generally i would just split those two terms as a depot is where you is generally where you have empty trains waiting and if waiting is where you have full trains that are just waiting to be allocated so in either case, that would solve both of those cases by, by either removing this constraint on the loading side by having them sort of get out of the loading station so that the empty train can come in or the depot where basically the empty train goes to a depot and waits until it can be allocated. So let's have a look at those cases and see why what issues we have here. This is the simulation where we have a loading station, an unloading station, and then we have a waiting station over here, a depot, not a waiting, a depot. I'm going to split it so that a depot is for empty and a waiting is for full. This looks wonderful. This is exactly what everyone would uh, propose. And it does work. It absolutely does work. However, there is a reason why I don't want to do this. Uh, and the reason is that, as you can see here in my previous train, they go one, two stretches through the network in order to do a full loop. They go from load to unload, from unload to load. That's the full uh, round trip, and that's two stretches through the network. In this case, it's one, two, three. And of course, in this case, you can say, well, that's pretty close. But if we're talking about a big train system such as this, then there's no way for me to, to make sure that the train depots are going to be close. Like I could build it here or here or here, but I'm eventually I'm going to have to build them all over the network. Or at least if you have one, then you're going to have a lot of congestion heading towards a single point and then sort of siphoning in and parking at that depot. If you have the multiple locations, then you can't guarantee that this train over here will not take the depot over there. It'll of course take to the closest one. But the thing is that that might not be available because of all the other ones. Um, and if you make it so that it's big enough to have all available, then you end up having 20 or 30 or 40 trains trying to go through the same intersection to get into the depot. Neither of those situations are particularly useful or they're actually quite constrained. So this is why I don't want to do it because for me, when building a megabase, there are two things that kill the megabase. Eventually that makes you unable to continue. And that is when the UPS uh, FPS, as you can see top right hand corner, drops to a level where you don't want to play anymore, whether that's 40, 60 or 20 or wherever it is. At some point you don't want to play because it's just too buggy and too, or too laggy and too slow. The other thing that will absolutely kill your base and you cannot fix it is train congestion. At some point, your train network cannot handle any more trains. And by that time, there is no way to really fix it because adding just another layer of train or another more trains will just cause the congestion to, uh, to, to build up. And as we all know from every motorway expansion ever in the history of humanity, adding one more lane of traffic does not give you uh, the proportional increase in uh, capacity. So basically, I need to be extremely careful that I minimize the amount of train in the network and the amount of trains. And that's why I don't want to do this because it adds 50% more train traffic in the load. And that will be a hard constraint and it will be the one thing that kills my base. So that's not, uh, that is why I'm not using this option. It works, 
but I can't use it because it will uh, kill my mega base because of train congestion. So what about a waiting station, you might say? Instead of having all of the empty trains waiting somewhere else, then take a location right after the loading station and leave the full trains close to the loading station so it doesn't become part of the network. Well, I've set that up here and uh, look at what beautiful setup we have here. This looks absolutely wonderful. We have five trains running and we have basically constraint of one, 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 and one and one. So there's total six numbers. And because there is just enough capacity in this network, it looks absolutely amazing, doesn't it? It works just what we'd like to see uh, that we it's working here. And uh, because this, when it works, it works brilliant. Because you can see that there is, even though there is extra path here, this could be built inside the same city block so that you are in part of the same. So it doesn't go out into the entire network and sort of merges into the entire network, but it stays close to the location. And that means it gets rid of this and another train can then come in here and, uh, and get there because the full train is already out here and waiting for somewhere to be allocated. Looks good, right? Yes. However, they, there is a very, very good reason why this can't work in at scale. Because in this, this is a little example I've built, and I've, of course, built it in a way that is as beneficial as possible to uh, to show the benefits of it. And then I will now show you a case where this absolutely breaks. So how do we do that? Well, I'm just going to start by removing two trains there. Now I've removed two trains, and then I will shut down this station. Why do I shut this station? Well, this just represents that we don't have enough resources available in the network. This loading station is simply not getting resources in inbound fast enough. So what we should be seeing here is that uh, we are getting getting trains in here. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Okay. So now we're sort of in a steady state where we would like to see this one operate operating again. We have trains coming in. They are working. Let's see. Okay. So this goes into the loading station and then go into the waiting station. What is super important to show, and this will take a bit of time to, to get into the error state, but I think it's worth worth looking at it because you will see it very soon. So now we have, this is represents that we are actually getting more locations here and you will see the problem occurring very, very soon. Here we have the issue coming up and what you will see now is that this train, there we go, there we have it. What happened? What the hell just happened there, right? What the hell happened? This train that was coming out from this location, from the load, was supposed to go to the next one. And we said that it was always possible to go into the next one. But it doesn't do that. It doesn't always do that. You can't guarantee that it does that. And that is the crux of the problem here. That once in a while, you will have a train that goes from the loading station. You can see this one where the path is. This one wants to go all the way around. Now it, go, now it goes around because it wants to go in here because what happens is that the waiting stacker was full and there is no way that you can prevent the waiting stacker to be full if you make it one, two, three, ten trains. Eventually, there is a situation where you will actually have the trains getting into a, a, an error state where instead of going from the, lo the local station from the unload, you can say this unload to this waiting, uh, sorry, this is a load thing, from this load to this waiting, from this load to this waiting, you, since they have the same name, they are all eligible. And you will see it now again. This one is now assigned out. And that one has is going on and uh, take, taking a full loop. That generates a stupid amount of extra transport in the network and causes a hell of a lot of congestion. That's why it can't work. The only way to solve that is by then giving these specific names instead of all of these being called load three and load three so that they can mix is that you have to link these two together so that the train and then also have hard coded trains so that the train goes from there must go to that one. So this one is, for example, called train load three one and train waiting three one. Likewise for these two. That's the only way to do that. And if you do that, then you've ruined the entire train system because you can no longer use the train limit. You can no longer have like a pool of trains all doing iron uh, plates and then going to wherever iron plates are needed. You've now hard coded your train and you've lost all of the benefit of having this flexible train network. So this is the, right, the reason why the different situations are not working. So let's uh, shortly re reiterate before I propose, show how I am, I'm going to do it. Then in my original setup, there is a problem when 
there's not enough resources in the system and that the reason uh, and therefore it causes a deadlock where they're basically waiting the empty train waiting for the full train to leave the full train waiting for the empty train to leave and that's no good in the depot situation with the depot for a central depot for empty trains or multiple depots for empty trains the issue is that well it works but it generates 50 percent extra trans traffic in the network which is not something i can accept for my build and something you have to be very careful about because it is uh, it can probably kill it in the case of a waiting station where you have a dedicated unloading station or a dedicated waiting station after the load stations you have the issue and this, i think this is the worst possible issue and it's super difficult to explain in a in a youtube comment reply but this is a this issue is that sometimes they will do this extra loop and go around to another one because they will go from the loading station to a waiting station but that could be any waiting station and if the waiting station nearest is full then it will just choose another waiting station that could be anywhere on the map and it generates a lot of extra transport and it also gets stuck inside stackers for other things as well so this is not working for a train limit based a many to many train network uh, so what am i going to do well uh, the reason why I have not jumped on any of these solutions is because I am very happy with my current solution. Now, let me explain. We just reiterate on what is the situation that causes this to be a problem. This is a problem when the loading, the unloading station, the, the supply, the, sorry, the requester stations are not requesting enough. Well, that's okay. I mean, I don't want the requester stations are always, they should not always be full. They should be basically mostly empty. And then, uh, Wow, stuff being typed. They should be mostly idle and then once in a while opening up and then getting in. So this one is, is a probable state where only a one of the stations will be open at any given time. But this is the issue that I want to address uh, because this will imply that I do not have enough resources in my network. Now I want to be able to make sure that I have enough uh, resources in my network or at the very least to make sure that if, even if I... Even if I switch these off, as we do now, we get now into this situation where it's only one of those and only uh, that. Then what I can also do is I can simply take this one and set it up to a higher limit so that I can make sure that there is always going to be somewhere for the train. This train can always go somewhere. Can you? Yep. And then we get into a healthy situation again. So one of the options is either reduce number of trains but even though we have fewer trains we're still going to be able to get into a locked situation what is more important is that we need to make sure that there is enough supply available so basically what i'm saying is that my train system my train system is only going to be a problem in case i don't have enough resources inbound and that is exactly what we saw for our steel facility steel problem that i did not produce enough steel so starting to come up with advanced new ways of doing train networks in order to solve a problem that only actually occurs when I don't have enough raw resources. That is putting a band-aid on a broken arm. It's treating the symptoms because the, the actual disease is we don't have enough steel, which is kind of what always happens in uh, as, as soon as you start making purple science. So I'd much rather be focusing on increasing the supply and thereby completely removing this uh, this this problem instead of trying to make advanced ways of solving it and this is also why that i am going to from now on gracefully ignore comments about hey why don't you just do this for your train network because the the solution to my train network network is more inbound resources it goes back to the to uh, to very very basic supply chain uh, supply chain logistics you want, the, you want to make sure that the only thing that you're optimizing is your bottleneck. Any improvement anywhere outside of your bottleneck will not increase the capacity of your overall system. And the, the overall, the bottleneck in this case, in my case, was the lack of steel and no amount of optimization of train network or anything else or more robots or more trains or anything that will solve the problem that I don't have enough steel. So... The only way to solve not having enough steel is add more steel to the network and then all the other problems will go away. At least until we find something new and interesting here. So I hope that this was a useful illustration of some of the very advanced situations that can occur when you have a many-to-many -many train limit constrained train network and how 
uh, adding something like a waiting station as we did over here or have waiting a, a station such as depot will actually solve the problem at hand but give us much bigger problems down the line such as more congestion or train more con train congestion or very unintended behavior inside the network that leads to uh, extra train transport there we go we have the extra loop illustrating thank you for illustrating the problem right now for me and instead keep it simple and make sure that you optimize the stuff that needs optimization in this case insufficient inbound or insufficient raw resources instead of messing with the train station thank you very much for watching i hope this was useful to you and i hope it was as it was trying to make it as dense as possible in terms of explaining something really advanced through some uh, some specific specific examples let me know in the comments section below if you like this and uh, of course the like button is also a good way of illustrating it i hope you've enjoyed it and if you are then be sure to subscribe to the channel i'll see you guys as we continue to build our mega base and book in the next episode thank you very much for watching until next time take care and as always stay effective